I would never right from the jump work with a macro. So a huge, huge name celebrity or someone with a huge, like massive amounts of followers, hundreds of thousands of followers. The whole philosophy of seeding is that the seed is a gift that you hope to blossom into a long-term relationship. And that seed is your product that you can get into their hands that you hope it, it turns into something long-term. And the more content that you can generate from influencers, the more that you can get rights to the content to be able to repurpose. But I would say, you know, repurpose this content where your marketing, other marketing channels are working. So on this episode, we're going to be talking about influencer marketing with micro influencers, specifically micro influencers. It's a great episode. You do not want to miss it. Do stay tuned. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 2X e-commerce podcast show. I'm your host, Kune Campbell, and this is the show dedicated to rapid growth in online retail. We tell stories, we, t- we, we go through tactics, we, we, we dissect strategies in e-commerce growth stories. We get experts, we get founders, we get SaaS reps who know a thing or two about e-commerce because they, they, they crunch a lot of data you know, from, from their e-commerce client. The ethos of this show is to get growth, get you growing. We give you one thing to test in this podcast. You take away that one thing, test over the next 30 days. And, you know, hopefully if that delivers growth, that's fine. If it doesn't, you learn fast. Um, you, you test, you test fast, you learn fast and you move on. You learn, 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 learn is what this show is all about. It's about growth. Without further ado, I'd like to sort of talk about the episode you're about to listen to. It's um, an interview I had with Cody Wittick from Kenship. Um, if you're a regular of this podcast, you'd have, um, you would have you know I've interviewed um, Taylor Legace from the same company called Kenship. They're an influencer marketing company based in California, but they serve you know the entire world. And I just quiz him about internet marketing. It's just the the, the simple thing. We talk about their philosophy. We talk about um, you know, the intricacies, I ask him some, some really interesting questions. You know, when he talks about the fact that they, they want to seed, you know, so many um, influencers, like 500, I'm talking about like, you know, what if you're selling a high ticket item, like a sauna or something, just hypothetically speaking, how, how does influencer seeding actually work? So we, we, we get into some intricacies and some things you guys want to hear, you know, some questions you guys want to ask rather. And um, we just get into the nitty gritty of platforms um, how to approach, um, you know, influencers and how to build out a long-term influencer marketing. So every, you know, two months, every three months, you're, you're, you're always in a campaign, you're always in a campaign, you know, and with that cadence, um, where you have, um, you know, you, you reserved some stock in, in your, um, you know, in your portfolio, in, well, some stock for influencers, how that could be a growth methodology. He is of the opinion that influencer marketing is just as important as performance. And, you know, I, I, I kind of agree with him in, in that sense. Um, it's, it's really, it's in, 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 yeah, it's influencer marketing is important really. And, um, that's why I, I brought Cody to, to, to help you to refresh your knowledge on, um, what you should be doing from an influencer marketing, especially if you're doing this in-house rather than, um, you know, with an agency and what you should actually be quizzing your agency about. If so, if you're using an, an influencer agency or an influencer consultant, you know, what are they doing? What's exactly, you know, are they doing in regards to, um, you know, your strategy and, and just checking in to, to knowing, you know, what, um, what to do from a, you know, from, from a best practices standpoint, particularly when you're not, um, you know, getting the, the macro influencers or, you know, the celebrities, you know, what you do with micro influencers, you know, and that's what this, this episode is on nano influencers. There's nano and then there's, there's, the, 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 there's a micro and that's what this episode is, is, is all about. So if you want to, 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 to get abreast and on, on, on the topic of influencer marketing, you're thinking about launching an influencer marketing campaign, yeah, this episode is for you. So without further ado, listen to Cody Wittick. Hey, Cody, welcome to the 2X e-commerce podcast. Thanks for having me, Kenley. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We, we, we've had um, Ken Chip. Ken, in fact, Ken Chip is a friend 
of this podcast, anytime it, when it comes to speaking to um, an influencer marketing strategy, we we often you know get your opinion, um, particularly for Taylor, your partner. He's he's been on the podcast I think twice, and he was on um, the Commerce Excel um, conference, the virtual conference we had last year. Um, he dropped some 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 bombs on on there. Um, some real good structure on how to go about um, you know an influencer marketing strategy with no strings attached, in, in the sense that you know um, there's nothing really as hiding. It was like, hey, this is our formula. Um, either copy and paste it or work with us, you know, if you don't have the capacity. Um, and I found that really just open, really. Um, so so welcome. We're, we're really, really, really happy to, to have you on today. I'm surprised you even want me on here for as much as Taylor's been on here. I'm just, I'm uh, I'm on deck. So I guess it was, it was time to have the other partner, huh? I, I guess it's it's a pressure of, of Twitter. You 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 also everywhere on Twitter. You you, you give those threads, um, and yeah, like yeah, sometimes thousands of people you know engage with 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 some of your your tweets. So th- there is certainly something to to be had there. Okay, let's let's jump right into to um to to, to influencer markets into your thoughts before we even jump into influencer marketing. Let, let's let, let me get your thoughts and your your um your your feeling on um on the state of, of e-commerce. We're, we're in 2022, we're recording this um, at the tail end of June, um, 2022. People will be listening to this episode in July of 2022. Well, what, how, how do you think, do, do, do you think, let, let me not um, put any prompting questions. What, what are your thoughts on commerce right now, um, in the state of e-commerce? Uh, I might be in the minority, but I'm pretty bullish on it. I'm excited about e-commerce. I'm excited about um, all these changes that have happened. I mean, even going back to iOS 14 and uh, 15 and all these different things that have made us all better marketers. So I think anytime, what's the phrase? Pressure creates diamonds. So I, I just think, you know, everything that's going on with the U.S. economy as well and people fears about recession and um, even if that is the case, you know, the strong will, will rise. Um, so I'm excited about e-commerce in general. I think we're seeing a massive probably swing back to wholesale and retail and stuff like that coming out of COVID, but eventually everything will shift back and probably where we were before COVID, where it was kind of a mix of both. So, um, yeah, I'm overall excitement. Incredible. Good, great stuff. Good question. Um, good, good answer rather. Um, so these strong diamonds, um, diamond brands, what do you think their fundamentals are, um, at, at this point in time, you know, brands that you think will thrive after, you know, whatever happens in, in the next, you know, few months, whether it's 12 months, whether it's 10 months, what, what do you think they'll be doing now um, to, to ensure that, um, you know, um, they're, 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 they're not just surviving, but, but, but thriving? When it comes to influencer marketing or just in general? Just general, the the formula will jump into influencer marketing just after that. I just, I, it's a question I've been asking lots of guests, um, you know, um, just the first questions, um, just due to the, the numbers I'm seeing personally, it's some, some, some some e-commerce businesses i hope they survive um and and others they're doing fairly well they're in different verticals um so so where i'm seeing a lot of activity are is like um you know really mature consumer brands um so three year plus consumer brands that are still doing their thing um when i mean consumer brands i mean like fast moving consumer brands you know consumer packaged goods brands um because most of them are really staples um i'm not really seeing the recession affect them that much but like if you're selling, I don't know, stationary, you're selling bikes, consumers seem to be, you know, giving it to second thought, you know, fourth, fifth thought before they actually purchase that there is certainly suppressed demand. Um, so I don't know how long, you know, these, these brands are going to hold up. So it's, yeah, it's, it's something that I think about a lot. And I, I like to ask, um, you know, experts who come on the show to, to give me their, their temperature, their gauge. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, certainly high ticket items are going to be more of a guess these days or more of a uh, a question mark. Um, but I just think as brands need to be thinking 10 years out instead of maybe a year out, 
Um, mm -hmm. And maybe that should affect how, you know, basically what's their, their churn rate? What's, you know, how, how can they survive? Like what's their survival plan of like, okay, whether it be layoffs or getting rid of software that's unneeded or um, subscriptions and stuff like that. And what's like the bare bones that we need to survive um, yeah. to maintain business. Cause those are going to be the ones that endure something that could be potentially serious for e-commerce. Um, yeah. Especially if you have a high ticket, you know, like a bike, like you said, um, these luxury items that, you know, not everybody needs. We're not talking about like, you know, food delivery or, um, yeah. but even that, you know, so those are kind of yeah. some of my thoughts. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We're in survival mode for sure. Um, I'm looking forward to, to Amazon's, um, you know, Q2, um, the results. Q1 was uh, minus 3%. Um, in, in, in retail, in the online retail, you know, operations, it'd be interesting to see if, um, there's, there's a, there's an uplift there because that, that, that signals down, you know, further down the chain for sure. Um, like Amazon or, or, or love them anyway, um, good to know your thoughts. And I like the, the reference on, on survival, survival, which we're in survival mode now. And after that, it's, it's really, you know, for, it's really left for us to thrive. Let's talk about influencer marketing. Um, it's it's certainly now, you know, in fact, um, you know, a lot of people talk, you know, the, there's a synonym to it, which is the creator economy. Um, <laughs> what, what is the landscape? What should people know? So for, not just for those people living under the rock, but for, um, for, for leaders, you know, so e-commerce leaders listening to this, e-commerce operators listening to this episode, um, what first principles principal yeah principal concepts should they be just aware of when navigating the influencer markets in space from from your opinion first thing i would say is before you start investing in influence marketing make sure you have the resources behind it to make it successful so it's no different yeah i think people begin to think and still have in their heads that influencer marketing is this kind of silo channel that's um you know a flip of a switch and you get success and all i have to do is pay this influencer 20 grand and i'm gonna get 40 grand back um yeah they, they just don't view it as every other marketing channel it's and first of all it's way more human than going into your facebook dashboard right so you have these human to human interactions that are just a lot more complex uh, than creating a Clavio campaign. Um, so that's kind of one is just, let's be realistic about what you're investing in. And it's no different than, you know, you trying Facebook ads and saying it didn't work for two weeks. Um, it, it's just, you can't just flip on Facebook ads and expect it to work in that short amount of time. But people think it's very different with influencer marketing. Um, like I can just pay an influencer and expect to see all these sales and then they throw the baby out with the bathwater. So, um, that's kind of the, the first thing that we just need to switch in our brains that this is a viable marketing channel that brands are spending serious dollars. Um, and that's not even necessarily reflective of that. It's smart dollars, but that there's like brands are making this a part of their marketing mix in a very serious way. And so that means that there needs to be resources behind that. So employees dedicated to it at a minimum, um, overseas contractors dedicated to it at a minimum, um, you know, whether you use an agency or not, I think it's just in the same way that, you know, you're going to get, cause I guess where I'm going with this too is people fractionally hire for influence marketing. Traditionally, it just doesn't work because you're mm -hmm. getting fractional returns. Um, so I think my point in all this is that it's a serious marketing channel. You need to invest serious resources if you actually are serious about getting a, a return on this channel. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what's the, what's the time duration? What's the typical time duration for, for an influencer marketing campaign? Oh, I mean, that could be as short as one day, depending on your philosophy of influence marketing. So what I just said about paying one influencer to post one time, that's, I guess that technically could be a campaign. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say what's average across the industry is probably, you know, a month um, campaign. 
So if you use a vast array of influencers, for us, that's very similar. Like we, you know, we identify and reach out to 500 influencers on a month to month basis. And that's generally in a 45 week time period. Um, so that's, that's kind of, but in terms of judging the channel itself and like what, what's reasonable to expect, I, I mean, I would say that's right along with any other marketing channels, so giving it three to six months to really see if it's a viable channel for you, depending on uh, your budgets and how much you can invest. Okay. And then, um, speaking to influencers, you, you just spoke, to, you, you, you just mentioned, um, the, you know, the one influencer campaign typically, you know, writing that 20 K check or 200 K check to that one influencer, um, is a gamble. We, we know that, um, there, there are no guarantees. Um, but you guys take a slightly different approach, which, which is with micro influencers. But before we jump into your approach, um, do you want to sort of break down the kinds of influencers? Um, that's typically available to, to brands. And then we, we jump into your preferred, um, you know, um, influencer type and, um, how you approach it. Yeah. The different tiers of influencers. I mean, there's, if you Google tiers of influencer, you're going to get 25 different definitions. So I don't know entirely how full this will be, but the different tiers, there's nano that's kind of, I would say generally accepted as like the one to 5,000 follower count. You have micros that the way that we define it is five to 150 K that's a huge range. Most people would say at most is probably 25 K or under, um, mid tier. And then it just goes up to macro. That's probably safely someone above 500,000 followers or a million followers. And then you have your celebrity type. So there's kind of like five ish different tiers of people that, um, people usually throw influencers into certain buckets and those are kind of generally the, the buckets that people throw them in. From, from, from your unique um, POV, what's a sweet spot um, in in this um, spectrum? Well, I would just, I would just come out and say like, I would never right from the jump work with a macro. So a huge, huge name celebrity or someone with a huge, like massive amounts of followers, hundreds of thousands of followers. If you're a brand just starting out in influencer marketing, please stare clear of macro influencers. Um, not that they're bad, not that they're bad people, not that, uh, sometimes it can't work. Uh, but it's just, you can waste a lot of money testing. Um, it's almost like trying to just nail certain U S stocks in day trading. I would say it's probably even worse, you know, like it's, you're just throwing money at a wall and hoping that it sticks. Um, so whereas with micro influencers and using a variety of micro influencers, you're, you're, you have much more of a diversified portfolio at less spend. So, um, and this, this goes into not even just judging on an organic performance basis, but viewing them as great content creators. And that's some of the reasons that we do recommend working with micros. Again, our definition between five and 150 K following. Um, so in that pool of people, they generally have better organic numbers engagement. They're easier to get a hold of, which is super important. And you're also not dealing with kind of the agents of the world, um, that want to get in there and spike up their rates so they can cover their fees or, uh, things of that nature. And generally speaking, they have built their following off of the content that they're condition like continually to produce rather than, Hey, I was in this movie and here's all my followers. Um, mm-hmm. they've, they've, they've built it over time. They've invested a lot of it. They might, this might very well be their full-time job. Um, so you get all that more intentionality of, around the content that they, they make. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it's very, very interesting. And, um, do you want to speak to, um, how you approach them? Um, you know, do, do you just slide into their DMS or do you email them and, um, what kind of, you know, response rates to expect and how many, um, you use of, um, you know, target per, per, per campaign? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how entirely helpful our the advantage of using us as an agency is the scale of which we can work. So like I said, identifying and reaching out to 500 influencers 
just the identification alone for a brand listening, 500 might take you six months to a year just to identify people without all the tools and software and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of one, but two, practically what this looks like is yes, reaching out through DMS and email. Um, the way that we would recommend going about doing that is what, um, if you've heard previous podcasts is very much enough strings attached. We want to reach out relationship oriented first. We want to build these relationships on giving, not asking. Um, so practically it's, Hey, Kenley, you know, we think you're a great brand fit. We'd love to send you the product. No strings attached. Meaning there's no strings attached back to myself that you have to do anything like this is, is a truly free gift. Um, so the more that you reach out this way, obviously the more less likely you're, or I'm sorry, the, the numbers work in your favor, the greater that you can do this because not everyone is going to opt in. Not everyone's going to post for free without you even asking things like that, the things that we come to expect. Um, but over time, you have genuine pool of people that authentically love you. Um, so the whole philosophy of seeding is that the seed is a gift that you hope to blossom into a long-term relationship. And that seed is your product that you can get into their hands that you hope it, it turns into something long-term. Because um, every, every brand listening right now is is they want a consistent pool of people that generally love them, that post about them time and time again to their audiences. But the system that they go about doing that to produce that outcome is a bunch of one-off posts and it's very transactional and it just leads to like a one-off drug. You constantly have to be finding new people to get this little high of boost the follower count or likes or engagement and stuff like that. Um, whereas with seeding, you're getting the product into their hands and the cream rises to the top, if you will. So the people reveal themselves to be true brand advocates. How do they do that? This shows by the posts that they will end up posting for free. So you asked about numbers breakdown out of every 10 that you outreach to, you want to, you want to see two people opt in to receive product. Um, basically say, yes, I'd love to receive the gift. Um, out of everybody that you send product to, you want to see at least 30% post for free. So if that's 30 people, that's six people getting the product. That's two people posting for free. Now, great. Like I said, greater scale that you can do that. The more and more that you do that, the more pool people that you grow that by. I just dumped a lot on you. I don't know. It makes sense. It's a numbers game. Um, so, so it's it's a two percent. Well, well, it's twenty percent from my math. It's a twenty percent conversion rate. Two two out of ten that we eventually post. Twenty percent opt in, thirty percent post rate. Right. Okay. Right. Um, how does this vary when um, you know you're selling high ticket items? Um, you know that in itself the cost of goods for, for you know for like thousand plus you know um products or you know would be potentially higher um than a an 80 box you know product where you know um, right. your, your 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 cogs are probably twenty dollars you know Mm -hmm. how, how do you manage that you know um with with price points um you obviously can't well, most brands won't be able to, you know, um, mass seed if right. AOV is typically high for, for the brand. So, so how, what approach would you, would you take a slightly bigger influencer? Would you come out of the micro um, pool or would you still use micro pools and um, just be, be happy with the numbers and just scale down um, the number of seeds? Yeah, so much of it is would be a test. One from the jump, I would say, yes, the principle of seeding still remains. You just have to be even more particular in emphasizing the identification process that goes into these influencers. You really have to be particular. And I would say that that's just true across the board. You obviously don't want to be sending out product to people that don't fit your brand. But if you have high cogs, you're selling saunas, for example, or, uh, you know, extremely high cogs, like stuff like that. You need to be very particular about the influencers that you do reach out to and ultimately send product to. So the scale, which you can do it is obviously not as high, but the principle still remains of seating. 
And then I would also just compare it to what you would normally pay an influencer if you just went to them and said, hey, I want you to post one time on your feed. It More than likely, it's going to be way more than the cogs of your product. Um, so going to even a bigger tier, which is something that you suggested, I would definitely open that up. You know, if you have a higher price point, it's probably more than likely that some of these influencers would take it um, and potentially end up posting. The reason that we kind of stay in that micro tier is just because it is much more likely that they do end up posting for free. And then when we reach out for content rights to repurpose this content too, it's much more likely that that's low fee or, or for free as well um, versus someone with a bigger name. So yeah, those are some of the things to think about when you have, when you have high cogs. Yeah. You also mentioned earlier the fact that um, you, you don't want this to be a one-off, um, you know, transaction in the sense that um, you want this influencer to, um, on their own will, you know, post multiple times, you know, about your brand, um, if you without spamming their their um their, 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 their audience. Um, how do you so switch, make that switch um, from, hey, um, you know, use this product and they post once to them posting continuously? Do you then follow up with 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 other freebies or? Well, what's a natural process like um, to, to, to mm -hmm. getting them to be absolute fans or is it, does it then convert to something transactional where there's cadence in, in their posting yeah. so they remind their audience that you exist? Yeah, yeah. Great question. And to be clear, I'm not anti-pay or anti-contract influencers, by the way. I just think there's a proper way to start with them and that's through seeding. So I think very quickly after seeding, there can be an extremely uh, amount of motivation for them to consistently post their audiences, such as an affiliate program, you know, motivating them by commission that they can make off the back end of their post. Um, that's one. And then testing their content within paid media and seeing their performance there. You know, you can get creative on paying them on a percentage of revenue or profit, things like that. Um, but yeah, there's a, I would say the nurture process is the same way that you build a relationship with any other human, right? Like there's an initial first date, there's kind of like an initial meeting. And then if both parties are interested in continuing that relationship, there's like a hand holding from there. So that can often look like an affiliate program, monthly UGC contract, um, having them be a part of their, you know, ambassadors on your website, things like that. And that's all based on a mutual interest. Hmm. Super interesting, super interesting. And then um, how do you sort of, um, how does influencer marketing um, feed into to other, um, you know, to, to, to other aspects of, of your, you know, marketing mix, um, such as performance? Um, how are you seeing your best in class clients actually utilize or leverage the assets from um, from from their the relationships with with influencers to to, to improving um, you know other other bits of of their marketing. It's all about content creation, so it's a it's a great content pipeline to supplement your paid media efforts. Um, I would say that's primarily, and that's what we're doing on behalf of our clients. Seeing the content either post on TikTok or Instagram, repurposed within within ads. Um, so that'd be a recommendation there. And the more content that you can generate from influencers, the more that you can get rights to the content to be able to repurpose. But I would say, you know, repurpose this content where your marketing, other marketing channels are working. So paid search, YouTube, email campaigns. Um, we've heard a lot from our clients on how UGC is very effective with an email campaign. So ask for rights to be able to repurpose it there. Um, if it's landing pages on your website that leads to a lot of conversions, ask for rights for to be able to repurpose it there. So I would just ask, where are you seeing scale? Where are you seeing conversions? And then where is content effective to lead to those conversions and, and put it there? Um, mm -hmm. Most of the time what we see is that that's within Facebook and Instagram ads and TikTok now more and more. But um, if you, the brand, are thinking, well, I don't really run ads, but I see incredible conversions on my Amazon landing page, 
put it there. Um, so that's how you got to think about it. Cause influencers as a distribution channel only are very, very tied to the algorithms performance versus you as the brand have a lot of different marketing channels that you can repurpose this content and you're much more in control, uh, of the return than the social algorithms on organic. Mm. Um, speaking to channels, um, so to 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 e-commerce, um, you know, operators listening to, to to this episode, where are you? Where should they be doing most of the recruits re- recruitment? Um, what what which of the platforms is most um, you know, look creative? Is is it YouTube? Is is it Instagram? Is is it TikTok? Um, I know there's a lot of um, you know, um, you know, platform overlap, audience overlap, platform overlap. Um, a TikToker is very likely to have an Instagram account. A YouTuber is more likely to have all three accounts. And they're like, but but where where where, where is your focus, um, Cody at, at at Kinship? All three, um, Instagram and TikTok, in terms of seeing the most amount of content that does get produced and from our seeding efforts, but. They all have YouTube channels as well. They might not be a YouTuber in the sense that they have 500,000 subs, but they have, you know, a YouTube channel where there's evidence of great video content creation ability, things like that. Um, Mm -hmm. The thing, the thing that's with seeding is that you're not going to see YouTubers or huge YouTubers, like just throw up a, um, you know, a video on their YouTube channel just because it's, they treat it like a TV network. Um, but I think it's very, very effective to create relationships with YouTubers by getting the product into their hands because that leads to cheaper deals in the future. So if I were a brand, I'd be focusing on those three for sure. YouTube, yeah. uh, Instagram, and TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just as obvious as it may be. Um, I'm, I'm just so bullish on on YouTube to to, to now. Um, it, the numbers just speak for itself in YouTube in the sense that you know um, we have a one year old or eighteen month eighteen month old child, and he watches you know YouTube and my 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 dad who's seventy four sends me YouTube clips. You know, <laughs> I think the demographic of YouTube is just it touches every single demographic. It, it's just just the way it is it follows us throughout mm-hmm. our lifetime and i just think it's the most powerful platform out there um but again i'm biased <laughs> no um, it's I'm, I'm bullish on youtube as well yeah so 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 very very interesting stuff there um particularly um on the three platforms um how do you sort of track perform how do you for me, it's control. And what I'm thinking of now is control. Um, you know, um, with with an influencer marketing campaign, um, you know, the traditional way, quotes and unquote, if if you're not an agile brand, if if you're just a, you know, you're you're an incumbent, you know, um, you know, brand, you know, with a corporation, you you you're typically going to give give um, the influencers you recruit a brief, right? Typically, you, mm-hmm. you give them a brief that this is how you do it, this is how you don't. Now with the seed in right. where it's a gift and you're not nudging them to, to, to post, you're just saying, Hey, you know, have this, have this, um, let me send you free stuff. Let me know what you think. You don't even need to ask them what, what they think. And typically they, you know, it's just the, you, 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 you're, you're leaning on, on the power of reciprocity. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, I guess with that lack of control, how do you sort of, um, ensure quality, you know, quality posts are, are put out there that align with with your messaging, with 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 the utility, with your benefits, with with your brand. If you're worried about quality of what you're going to get back, you're picking the wrong influencers. Right. I would just say that right from the jump. Uh, you need to be very, very particular in assessing the video content creation ability of these influencers um, and be completely 100% confident in the quality of their content. So in the scenario that I put product into their hands and they end up posting about it, I'm going to be proud that they represent my brand and that they can speak to my product. Um, Now, where I see the question going is kind of like, yeah, yeah, no, I got that. But 
how do I know they're, they're going to talk about my brand specifically or my product uh, in a specific way that I want them to? Well, then I would say they're the ones creating the content all day. Let's lean on them. Let's lean on how they best know how to post their audience. But two, there is some ways that you can control kind of the content that you do get back. And one is your unboxing experience. Um, this is where you can give language to your product and brand and give the language to how they can speak about you without saying, hey, when you post, say these three things. So the card insert that goes into the unboxing experience, everything that goes into that experience, how are you, how are you giving them language to speak about you that shows product differentiators, things like that. So that's, that is one of the major ways that you can give them a creative brief without giving them one. Right. Right. Make, makes sense. So, so you, you, you essentially put them aside a set of SKUs and also um, giving them a set of instructions or notches in the insert. So you, you create something specifically, you create, um, you know, extra material literature, physical literature um, that really speaks to them really there. Where welcome, you know, influencer Lizzie, um, you know, thank you mm -hmm. for trialing this. Um, you really like, this feature, that feature, why not try this? Um, it would be great to hear, you know, what you, what you think, um, you know, and then you leave it at that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it could just be your standard packaging too. At the same time, like um, most brands are putting a little bit of, you know, material into their packaging about the brand story or how they got started or where the product idea came from, like things like that. Mm -hmm. All that stuff is super helpful. And provides inspiration for the influencer to talk about talk about you in a, in a really effective mm. way. Mm -hmm. Interesting, super super interesting. Okay, um, I think that's that's about it, really. Um, I think that's uh, that's a really detailed, um, you know, overview on 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 on, on influencer marketing um, from 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 your um, you know strategy and in terms of the the, the mass seeding. Um, um, you know, um, approach to, to, to it. Is, is there any other critical points you think the audience should, um, be aware of in, you know, with, with, with the mass, with the mass eating approach to, to influencer, you know, outreach? No, I, I, I think we touched on them all. We, I would just definitely repurpose this content, um, within Facebook. If, if you do get rights to it and repurpose it, um, where it's working, we would recommend Facebook. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, Cody, it's it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the Two X Ecommerce Podcast. Um, for those um for, for for listeners who want to find out more, um, they can head over to kinship .co. It's k y n s h i p kinship .co. Um, Cody, where do you most hang out? Um, it's obviously Twitter. <laughs> Um, or do you, yeah, do you shoot, also, shoot, um, shoot me a DM there on Twitter, right? Um, your, your handle will link to your, your handle, which is Cody underscore Wittick on, on, um, on Twitter, but you know, it's an absolute pleasure having you, mate. Thank you. Thank you, Conley. Right, cheers.